It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Welcome back to another episode of the Utner Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams sitting in a blustery cabin here in mid Michigan tonight. <laughs> You're not kidding. It, it's it's windy out. Hold there. on to your hat, man. I know, right? It's like it's like holy cow. It's like I see one the cow blowing things. down the road, man. It was crazy. It, we've had some crazy <laughs> weather. Luckily, we've just had a little bit of wetness and, and wind today. But, a little fifty uh, mile an hour, man. It's crazy. I didn't go outside to find out, but. Let's quit blowing off steam here, man. Let's get Let's into it. Let's do it. So you go ahead and uh, tell the good people about the people who help us. Absolutely. There's nothing better than helping our supporters who help us. And, and you know what? Starting off, getting over to uh, Deer Camp in Sterling Heights or Buck Bates, getting over to buckbaits.com. Uh, if you use the promo code UNJ20, you'll get 20% off your order at buckbaits.com. Or go see Julie down at the store at Deer Camp in Sterling Heights. Go check it out. Uh, you can go check out everything they got in the store. It's a brick and mortar store. You can touch it, you can feel it, and you can buy food there. That's not bad at all. I like that. I know, right? He's got some venison there, and so got to go check it out if you're in Sterling Heights. You know what? Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Lincoln Roan on the show, and um, you know, before you know it, we're going to be into April. It's going to be needing to be spring planning season. And if you want twenty five dollars off your order, use the promo code. Uh, Pat, UNJ25 at packermax.com or give Lincoln a call and just talk with him. Find out what, tell him what you need, what you're looking for. He'll get you pointed in the right direction. And nothing better than getting those those calls ready. Uh, Predator gee, season's still going on, you know. Absolutely. Turkey season's coming up too. And there's nothing better than getting over to JPO Game Calls and getting uh, 10% off your order uh, when you use the promo code UNJ10 at JPO. And... You didn't give me the slide to put up this week. I thought I sent it to you. Oh, no, I didn't. No, you did not. Okay. Uh, we had them on the show a couple weeks ago. They are now proud supporters of UNJ, wildseasonings.com. You use the promo code UNJ2021. You'll get your 10% off your order. You got to try this stuff because it is, it, it's a seasoning that we tried and it pops. Dude, it's out of sight. It is, isn't it? it it's um, well, I'd say something, but I get in trouble for saying it. So right, I I described it in a certain way. <laughs> it makes your mouth explode. <laughs> it does. It does. So, uh, you know what? It's Thursday night. It's the third Thursday of the month, and that means only one thing at, at Up North Journal. It's Yamaha night. It is. And there's nothing better than having on a Yamaha Pro Fisherman, and we're going to talk fishing. The season's coming, fast approaching. So let's go over to Wisconsin and talk to Josh Blosser. Hey, Josh, what's going on, man? Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, we're, we're tying things down over here to keep things from blowing away, but other than that, we're doing good. Actually, I think we got <laughs> something for Wisconsin blue this way. Right, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, I was going to say, I hear you. Yeah, we've, we've been dealing with those winds, too. It's crazy. It is absolutely nuts how windy it is right now. I, I bet the water's pretty choppy for you guys right now. Yeah, well, what, what open water's around here? I'm sure it's rocking pretty good. Is there any open water at all to be had right now? Yeah, there is. So, like, uh, my home body of water here, Lake Wisconsin, uh, the Wisconsin River runs through it. So, it actually opens up fairly early, I guess, considering inland lakes. Um, but a lot of the the main bays still do have ice on it. So, there's limitations. But uh, luckily for us, I guess, there's a, a handful of ramps all the way around the lake. So, there's definitely access. There's definitely great fishing going on right now. I know guys are out. I personally have not been out yet, but uh, there's been a lot of guys out already catching some walleyes and saugers i know uh here in michigan uh saginaw bay uh we're getting the ice shoves coming up on shore right now but the, the saginaw river itself man i've seen boats on it already people fishing uh trying to get some walleye so it people are starting to get out there it's that time of year 
Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely is. And, you know, just north of us is the, the Fox River uh, running into Green Bay there. Um, it, it's it's not quite at its peak, but, you know, there's there's a group of guys up there that they, they work so hard to open them launches up as soon as the first warm front comes. I mean, they've got pumps, chainsaws, everything out there, and they do everything they can to start getting boats in the water. And them guys are catching, you know, I'm hearing of 70 fish days already up there. They seriously take chainsaws, cut their way through the ice. There's, there's definitely a group. There's a group of guys that put in a lot of time in opening the ramps well before. <laughs> then, if you just let Mother Nature take their time yeah. or do work its course, yes, there is definitely a group up there that uh, they put in. A lot That's of work, awesome. Working effort, yep, to get them. You know, with the current, it goes right. The dam's right there, so nice. they basically anything to loosen ice, get it up. It gets out of there quick, and they got open water to go fish. I, that, that's hilarious. I've I seen them use chainsaws for like sturgeon spearing. You know, cutting the big holes for spear. But man, they want the ice to go away. Yeah, right, right. Well, <laughs> speaking yeah. of ice going away, you know, it's getting, it's getting, we're hearing that you guys are coming to town next April. But before we get there, how did you be? How did you? How did you become a pro walleye fisherman? Because we talked to your brother last year, and now we find out that his brother's in it. So you're the last of the four that I, we know that are in the pro walleyes and you know what made you decide to, to head that direction and and get into it was it the old i'm gonna beat my brother game or what was it uh you, you know what it really was it, it starts uh all the way with my grandpa um you know he's the one as far as from what i remember um being a youngster you know i used to he lived up in minaqua and uh we'd go up there me and i'm also a twin um so we would spend a month, month and a half just up with my grandparents in the summer when we were out of school. And uh, fishing was his thing. He was a, a diehard fisherman. And what we did was basically we had a bunch of chores to do around their house, mowing the yard, whatever. Once we did those daily, then our reward was we got to go out fishing with grandpa. And so as far as fishing goes, that's really where that came from. Now, the tournament side, I would probably have to say started with my dad. Um, he actually fished on the FLW, uh, the bass side, for, oof, had to be it's somewhere in that 8 to 12 year range. Okay. Uh, fished professionally on the bass side. So the the, the tournament scheme and, and, you know, what all goes on with that, I got to see, um, you know, like I say, I, I, I remember the days coming home from school, literally rushing inside to get on a computer uh, to watch my dad come way in, you know, walk across the stage, depending on what flight it was, if I was done with school or not at time. You know, I didn't have cell phones in school, so I couldn't live stream it off my phone. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was really what got me you know the excitement level of tournament fishing uh then to my older brother robert i would definitely say is the reason why i have steered towards walleyes uh, i've been fortunate enough to grow up with them and we have done a ton of fishing together um and uh you know his passion went that way and i kind of just followed right along with him and kind of ever since that the story's story's done i do love bass fishing i do i admit it there's not a lot of walleye guys that will say that but i you know when i go fun fish i usually fish for bass um but as far as the tournament side yeah okay i'm a i'm 100 percent walleye guy so you got a little uh, fa- family gatherings must be interesting gotta admit it's not gonna lie there's a little gotta <laughs> oh, be a little, yeah. little competition there um you know we talked about this in in, in kind of a, our warm-up talking to you um as you go down that path of being that professional type of person, getting into the walleye or bass or whatever you might be doing, how important is is family to you getting in and doing this? Because you're traveling, you're you're doing tournaments, you're you're away from home. Uh, talk about how that affects you, uh, the support you need and you get. Yeah, you know. <sighs> It, it, it is everything uh, to be able to do this. Like I, I after every tournament, I, I am thankful for how blessed I am to be able to do these tournaments because it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work on myself and any tournament angler. They know that. But your family that, you know, and mine, unfortunately, cannot travel. My wife works. I have a two and a half year old daughter. Um, and, you know, when I'm gone for that week, week and a half, my wife holds down the fort. You know, it, it, without them, this wouldn't even be a thought. It wouldn't. And and 
the support too. It's not just I'll do it. It's they support what I do. Um, they're they're excited for it. You know, they they watch all this stuff. They watch the weigh-ins. They're paying attention. Um, you know, the best time is you know when I get off the water and I get to Skype my daughter. You know, every day we try to do that. When I'm fishing late, I take five minutes off in the middle. You know, once I find service on a body of water, um, just to Skype my daughter. You know, so the the family aspect is a hundred percent so important to have the support behind you. So you are allowed and capable of going out and concentrating on your task at hand, you know, for that particular tournament, which is go try to win it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's got to be huge because, I mean, there's so many guys – we know on the hunting side uh, of the what we're doing that uh, family can make you or break you. I mean, it, it's 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 either there or it's not, and if it's not, it can cause uh, huge issues. But uh, to have that kind of support, that's got to make you feel more. I would say even more confident out there on the water, knowing you got that support behind you. Yeah, it, it, you know it does, and. You know, my little girl, like I said, she's two and a half years old. She's starting to, she's getting to that age where she's really picking up a lot of things. And, um, you know, my my tournament jersey this year, I had one made for her. And one of the proudest days, she actually, it was Valentine's Day. Um, she got her little Valentine's gifts, me and my wife got her. One of which, she's a big mini Minnie Mouse fan. And got her a sweatshirt with the little ears and stuff. She loved it. So she put it on, and before we left, she was saying, Daddy's jersey. And nice. I'm like, the, you know, I kind of half heard it. I'm like, what? She's like, I'm like, oh, you, the jersey, because I had just given it to her about two days before. Uh-huh. And she insisted on wearing that jersey over the top of that brand new Minnie Mouse sweatshirt that she went crazy for. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty cool. You know, like, I'm like, we got, it's we, awesome to see your little girl in your tournament jersey. We so. got that picture up right now as you're talking about it. And, you know, awesome. it's, it's, yeah. it's one of those things that um, – you're 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 going along and, and little things like this they're going to last memories and and it, one thing nice about technology if they're you know we also have their bads about it but right <laughs> but it's that being able to be connected whether it's through facetime or skype or whatever um that that moments you you know instead of going when when daddy would leave back in the day if he couldn't get to a payphone, that was about it. But yeah. now, look at that. You, you find, you hope to find signal. You can spend five minutes face to face, and 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 it just recharges your batteries. Oh, hundred percent. It, it makes a big difference too. It does, like you said. Like that's that's your fuel. You know, to, to get that it, it, five minutes is nothing. You know, I'm sure we've been talking for longer than five minutes already. It feels like we just started, and it, it's it's a short amount of time. But to see your family for that little bit of time, like you said, that's the fuel. And for them, for you to hear them say, you know, we love you, daddy, you know, go get them. You know, it's like, you know, that's what kind of why you're doing it is to, to make them proud almost. And, and they support you hundred percent good or bad. And um, yeah, yeah. That, that, I, I, I love that. I have a supportive family. Absolutely. And that's one of the things we wanted to talk about with you tonight is, is, is getting that aspect of what is needed uh, in support wise, because truthfully you're in one of you're, you're not, you're, you're not in a team aspect. So it's up to you to figure it out and try to win the tournament on your own. Well, I think a lot of people just in general, people maybe watching or listening to the show, you know, they they you know maybe have that dream of being out there on the water and being a pro fisherman or maybe in uh, the hunting realm being on tv you know and having videos out and the stuff but you know in reality a lot of people really don't know what it takes and the sacrifices like you said josh that the family does make i mean it it's huge yeah it it, it is it is huge i mean that's really the best way to put it um and I'd be lying if I said it ain't tough sometimes. It is. It's, it, it's part of it. Exactly. Um, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Because I think it's important. We're trying to get, you know, in in that aspect of, you know, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. You get a little bit in front of the camera or you get a little bit in front of the video or voice, but there's a, a 95% behind the scenes that takes a lot out of you. And, and that's the thing too with it, you know. It's it's not just my time on the road, so to say. There's a lot of prep work that goes into each one of these events, um, you know. And it's already started for our first PWS event coming up um, in April here on the Detroit River. It, it's already started for that. So I, I'm prepping tackle. I'm prepping rods. Again, that's time away from the family. Yep, you know? exactly. And, and yes, of course, I, I bring the daughter out. You know, we. But if realistically, when I'm doing that, you're not getting a lot accomplished like you need to. Um, it's also a lot of late nights. You know, my little girl goes to bed at seven, seven thirty. When she's down and out, that's when I head out to the garage. Then, and 
I stay out there as late as I need to because you know, she's that's sleeping. That's perfect. my time. That, that's a perfect example of when she, you did your dad time and after she goes to bed, you still got – it's not like, hey, you're going to go hit the pillow. No. You're <laughs> yeah. going to go do the no. next couple hours to try to catch up on what you, you, you needed to, to catch up on that you – stopped because you took time to be the dad right so yeah no I, absolutely i tell you what we're coming up on our first break uh the second break we're going to get into you and yamaha and everything that is yamaha so why don't we step out and we'll be right back all right we'll be right back after this folks pse archery has reinvented the way you buy bows from now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show, talking with Josh Blosser over in Wisconsin, talking about Yamaha. Right, exactly. You know, and and, and um, first off, Josh, if anybody wants to follow you or check out how you're doing, uh, can they follow you on Facebook and all that? Yeah, uh, honestly, the easiest way is Facebook. Um, uh, I will admit that's the one I'm the most active on, with especially with updates and stuff. Facebook and Instagram, a little bit of Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter guy. I don't know that that well. But Facebook and Instagram, and it's literally just my name, Joshua Blosser. Um, you, you, pretty easy to find. And at the same time, if there are any questions or you have any comments or anything, shoot me a message. I'll respond to them, you know, right away. As soon as I see them, um, I'm an open book. Ask me anything. I'd love to answer any questions anyone may have. Just keep them nice. Yeah. Just keep them nice, <laughs> mellow. Uh, you know, um, becoming a Yamaha pro fisherman, um, how did that all transpire that you got on in, uh, are now on, on the Yamaha pro fishing team? So that would have started, oh man, lose track of years. I, I, I've been with them for about seven or eight years now, and uh, you know they're the only my first, literally my first sponsorship, and I've never, never looked back since that day with them. Um, the the big reason was a, a personal relationship with David Itner that I had established leading up to me making the jump to fishing professionally, so to say. Um, and uh, I, I will always be thankful for David because he he took a ga- gamble on me, and you know I hope I hope I'm doing him proud. I'm I do my best for him, and uh, that's that's where we got our start probably about seven or eight years ago, and since then just kind of kept building up, building up, building up, and you know and, here and, we are now fishing the head to head the professional walleye series. And, so. and and now and now you've gotten to the point where it's not just a sponsorship, but it's a relationship with the company, almost like uh, a friendship that you know it, it just keeps on going every year and you know and and oh, i was nope. gonna say that's a great way to put it because when it first started um you know you've got one or two names you know of and you're in a little contact here a little contact there but now after seven or eight years i mean the the, the list of employees of staff at yamaha that i've dealt with that i that i've just met and you know now again the technology we we're talking about earlier social media you know, you can stay connected. It's amazing yeah, how many people you can stay connected with with through Facebook. And it really makes a lasting impression when you meet them. Um, and that's a great thing about Yamaha is that it, they make you feel like a family. Um, again, yeah. you're not – I hate to use this reference, but you're not just a number. You are, you know, like I am Josh Blosser to them. I'm not just some guy, which which it, it's a good feeling. It's a great relationship. And, you know, and we're, we're kind of, you know, as we're into our second year working with Yamaha, we're kind of finding that out as well. Learning, you know, learning you guys on the walleye side, um, on the bass side, Brandon Palinuk, and, and you guys uh, putting it all together. Uh, you guys are coming into town. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, we hope to, to hook up with you guys and, and, and sit down and talk with you and, and have a soda. And... Um, but what motor are you running? Let's talk about what 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 you got to power you down the Detroit River this year. Are gonna have? I'll I'll be running my uh, my F three hundred offshore. Um, that is the only motor I've ran since I've been with Yamaha. And 
I cannot say enough about the reliability. Honestly, there's so many good things you can say about Yamaha Motors. The reliability, uh, I can just keep saying that word over and over. It's amazing. It is simply amazing. I have had zero issues. And yes, I'll knock on wood, just superstitious. But <laughs> I've, I have had zero issues with any of my motors. It, they are incredible. And the performance of them, obviously, second to none as well. But, you know, a lot of these tournaments, when we're making 60, 80, heck you know it was making 100 plus mile or 100 plus mile runs one way you want to be confident that you're going to be able to make it back to the dock or the landing when you're doing that and it allows you to go fish because i 100 percent know when i turn that key i'm making it back in there's no questions asked so well that well that's the key and that's kind of the common thread that we're, we're starting to see um with everything going on here um that reliability uh, dependability, gas mileage, gas mileage. When when you guys got to yep. make a run, like you just said, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna sit there. You got time that you need to be back at a certain spot. You don't need to be going. Uh, I need some gas, or I can't get my motor started, or you you need to you need to get up and go. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. And when you during a tournament, when you decide to make a run like that, you're giving yourself at best an hour and a half, two hours of actual fishing time. When you do that, usually on big bodies of water, because it's it's never flat, it's never calm. You know, you you can't run wide open. It's it's rough water, um, and, and you have to capitalize on every minute of your fishing time. So, like you said, you can't be worried about having to go fuel up, or even if you're making that extraordinary of a run where you do, you can't sit there and fill up an entire sixty gallon tank. You need to know, hey, if I splash 10 gallons in, I'm good. I know it because of my fuel mileage, the great fuel mileage I get. I'm good to make it back. So you can basically do a splash and go in that situation. And it's it's the confidence of all those things that allow you to actually go and attempt those runs. And when you usually when you do those runs, it's a it's a zero or hero type of run. So that's how you win tournaments is taking the chance and uh, laying it all out there. You know, that's a good way of expressing that. I've, you know, we've talked about all the little keys. With, with Yamaha, you know, all the things that make Yamaha what it is. But when you put them all together, and you know, just what you said, you, you've literally got, you know, minutes uh, are taken and you've got to get somewhere, fish, and get back. And you're laying it on the line. Uh, you know, that, that says a lot. Yeah, it, it really does. It, uh, I mean, it, there's not a lot of guys that are willing to make that type of a commitment to a, just call it a 100-plus mile run. That I mean, it, it almost... Even myself saying it now, it almost sounds ridiculous in an eight-hour tournament day that you're going to run. You got 200-plus miles in travel, and you're also going to fish and catch your five biggest fish. You know, like, it just doesn't sound like you should be doing that. But, uh, again, but the reliability and, and the fuel mileage, it allows you to do it. It really does. It brings it into play. Uh, without all that, you would never even look that far. You know, that, that run would never even come into play. You would never even go take a peek at that area. Um but with the with the Yamaha, especially that F three hundred, that offshore, it, 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 literally it's boundary the boundary. It's all in play. And you're and you're talking about a three hundred horsepower motor, and they've got them yeah, anywhere from correct. two and a half all the way up to the big XTO offshores. Um, that you know this whole reliability uh, is needed, especially if you're going to take the ones out in the ocean, right? That, yeah. that, I don't feel like getting stuck out in the ocean. It just kind of just doesn't work well, I don't think. Just drift around for a few days. Yeah, just drift around. <laughs> At least here you you wind up in Canada, you know. <laughs> right. You know what's on the other side. Right, exactly. So, But, you know, dependability is one of the key thing, things that uh, Yamaha stands for. So not only do they stand for dependability, they also, they also pay back with this Yamaha power pay. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Uh, can you explain that just a little bit to people maybe that are listening tonight or watching tonight that's never heard about this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Yamaha Power Pay, it's a, I guess, best way, a contingency, pro, contingency program. So the best part about it, there's a, there's a, most companies have something like this out there. The big difference with the Yamaha one is, A, it's free. You, know, you don't have to pay your way into it to hope to win a tournament to get paid back decently. Um, it's, it's free to be in. The second thing is you don't even have to win the tournament to collect on the Power Pay, which is 
it, you know, in my experience, that's unheard of. You know, most of these contingency programs are all about if you win the tournament, there's set money aside. It's they want their Yamaha Motors to to do well, their participants to do well, and when you do do well, they're going to reward you for it. And again, like I said, there's no no entry into it. So it, it, literally, if if you fish any tournaments, it's worth checking out their website. Um, see in the tournaments that qualify for it and make sure you get signed up e- even regardless because it's free just in case you ex- you know not accidentally decide to jump into one that qualifies for it you want to be signed up um, that way you can collect your money you, you know you're right and, and as I we have the website up on the screen while you're talking about it uh, <coughs> yamahapowerpay.com and it, it, the scroll has got what they've paid out and like you said you don't have to win the tournament there's somebody I'm, in 31st place 31st place 13th place, 14th, 22nd, and they've they've got some money. You know, it might be a, it's just a yeah. couple hundred bucks, or it might be a couple thousand, depending on what tournament and and where they're at. But for free, why not? Absolutely, it just shows their support for for their consumer. Um, you know, they appreciate not only are they giving the best product out there in that class for an outboard, they appreciate you. You know, believing in them and running running their 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 product, and and they're going to reward you when you put it on a on a stage, basically. And even if you like you said with thirty something, I heard. Um, Hey, if you're the top Yamaha finisher. You're still getting the money. That they're not going to make you win the tournament, which is awesome because all of us tournament anglers know to win a tournament is is one of the hardest things to do. Like there's everything has to come into play, but to be consistent and to be in the top top 25 percent all the time, that's a good angler, and it might not look like it because you're not always in the top five. But that's consistency goes a long ways, and Yamaha recognizes that. Yeah, that's a, that's absolutely and awesome. it, it, it's one of those things whether it's uh, uh walleye fishing bass fishing get on the website yamahapowerpay.com <laughs> register check it out see if any tournaments that you're thinking about getting into and and, and sign up if you got a yamaha motor because it could pay in the end absolutely. and and then while we're talking about yamaha outboards you go over to yamahaoutboards.com you can check out the whole line of motors anywhere from a two and a half all the way up to the big 425 so you know it's just one of those things go check them out um the reliability and dependability and gas mileage if you're looking for a new motor is definitely uh getting over there to check it out you know before we go to a break here uh let's just say somebody come up to you and you didn't know them you know i mean maybe you're out kicking tires or kicking you know uh, the side of a boat, say so to speak. Somebody's looking to buy a new boat. Well, if you're if you're if you're if you're Joe, you're running over. If you're you're running over <laughs> yeah, cones. Cone. Yeah, you're running. <laughs> oh man, he's gonna get you for that when he sees you here in a couple of weeks. But you know, somebody's looking at a new boat. You know, out kicking the tire, so to speak. And you know, they're they're looking at motors. They say, you know, you know, we've seen you. You you do some fishing. You're you know, you're a pro fisherman. You know, why do you run Yamaha? What what would you tell them? The reason is that they need to look at Yamaha. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I when I'm at boat shows, whatever it may be, talking to anyone in the general public, there's three big points that I always make. And the first one is again what I harped on really the reliability. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care if I'm in a tournament taking my family out. I want to know I'm getting back to the dock every time, and that's where I have my confidence. Number two is fuel efficiency, the the the, the gas mileage you get with them. In my opinion, from my experience, what I've seen, it's second to none. And again, that's saving, that's keeping dollars in your pocket, whether it's recreational, um, tournament fishing, recreational fishing, it doesn't matter. You know, you have to start the motors to be mm-hmm. fuel efficient is a big deal. The third thing I tell people is, I said, you know what, if you line them up side by side, same haul, maybe it may not be the fastest one. It might not. In some cases, it will be, but it may not. But if you want to give me the fastest, and I don't know if I'm coming home and what that's taken out of my pocket for fuel, then you know what? Maybe Yamaha's not free. But as far as reliability, fuel efficiency, and performance, there's only one that checks all three of them. And you know that's usually what I, I tell everyone, and that's why I've been with Yamaha since day one. There you go. That's brutally honest. That's it. And, and honesty is the best key to a good salesman and word of mouth. Well, and you know, right now, it's with the way things are going in the economy. I mean, money's tight for a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, for, for me to put gas in my, my vehicle and head up north, I mean, there's times it's like, okay, you know, I got to make sure I got enough money to be able to get back and forth but also to go to work next week, you know, I mean, it, some people, they cut it real tight you know, and they have no choice. So that, that's a good point, you know, and maybe they do have the money to be able to buy a new motor. Uh, but when you start putting gas in it, yeah, you know, it adds up over time. So 
I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we're bumping up here on our second break, so we're going to step outside. We come back. We'll, we got some questions for them. We'll, we got some questions from people here online, and, uh, and we'll see where it leads us. So we're going to step outside, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. We're doing a little chat in here during the break. As always, we have a lot of fun during the break. So those of you who are listening to the podcast need to go over and check out our show. You get you, Everybody that's YouTube. listening on the podcast, uh, you got to go check over the Facebook or go check over YouTube, like Mike says, because there's a lot of things visually when you when you see you know what we talk about and uh, when we bring up the websites to look at the power pay, the Yamaha outboard motors. Um, yeah, it just gives a whole different aspect of whether you're you're just listening to it or watching it right absolutely so, absolutely all right we've got a couple questions here for you um first thing you look at a tournament site so you're heading to your a, a tournament what's the first thing you're going to look at i, I probably the you, boat, probably the boat launch do, right <laughs> do, do you do a lot of pre-scouting from home on using your maps yeah, yeah, absolutely I do. Um, and I'll answer that question, I guess, kind of how I perceive it as far as my, and I'm going to, hopefully I'm right here with whoever has asked that. Um, when we have a tournament location come up, especially one I'm unfamiliar with, uh, the first thing I do is uh, I lean on my electronics technology, Navionics. I literally look at the lake, zoom way in, and I start just studying contours before even knowing anything about the lake. I just start looking. And then I'll start the research on if, you know, what end, if there's a river through it, one end does it run through, where's the current running, start really fine tuning that. But the first thing I just want to see the layout of the lake. Is it a giant bowl? Does it have multiple structure? Um, start to get an idea and it almost gets me in a mindset like, okay, you know, this is just a huge, a huge bowl, a huge, you know, reservoir type deal. Now we need to start worrying about X, Y, Z compared to a lake with multiple, you know, mid lake humps and da 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 da. So that's that's where I always start off. I always go to a a uh, contoured map and really study the whole lake, and then start trying to put the puzzle pieces together. Like I'm there even before I'm there. Okay, so that's going to lead me to my next question. Um, okay, you're you're heading into the tournament. Uh, what's your favorite type of walleye fishing first? Uh, technique wise, yes, sure. So my favorite would probably I would probably pitch in plastics, um, cast in. You, you know, honestly, if you asked me that question two to three years ago, it would it was always and it still is. It's a close second. It is because I love it. It's open water trolling. Um, that's kind of where I got my start. Where I felt like my strong suit was when I was young and kind of coming in. I guess one of the first things that kind of clicked for me. But as of late. Um, I love pitching, casting to specific spots, specific fish, um, especially on a spinning reel, spinning rod and reel. Um, that that one-on-one -on -one combat, feeling the bite type thing. There's there's nothing better when you get on a good casting bite. Yeah, it's okay. It, it's pretty fun. All right. So obviously you're making plans coming to Detroit. So you've been kind of studying where you're going to be at and whatnot, and you kind of got to you're building a game plan in mind then. Yeah, absolutely. And and honestly, I've never been out there. Um, last year was my first time even in that area, uh, fishing Lake Erie. And uh, I did the same thing heading out to Lake Erie uh, for the NWT championship. Basically came out with everything, expected <laughs> expected everything, and I had a blast. It was so much fun. Um, so it's, it's a credible fishery. And I and just from that little sample I got, I can't wait to fish the Detroit River. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm preparing it. You know, there's a – it's a river. And, and in my opinion, with a river, there's a lot of your your, your general tactics. You know, like vertical jigging is going to play a huge, huge role. And I think our uh, our PWS, the Professional Walleye Series event coming up here. Um, but there's a lot of other things, you know, hand lining, for, for instance, on a river. It, you, you can't ever rule it out. It can really be a player, and I do like to hand line. Um, you know, there's, again, just looking looking at 
maps, contours, you know, it looks like there's spots where you could cast to them. So it's it's literally going to be an event that you, you got to bring your entire arsenal. And, you know, with the PWS, what's kind of cool about it is we get three days, three days to pre-fish. So, again, I've never been on the Detroit River. I have three days to take a look at it, try to figure out what tactic's going to work best, and then... I got to go beat 32 or 31 of some of the best walleye fishermen in the world and uh, make it to the top eight bracket. So I, I love the format. I can't wait to get started on that. And you, and you know, and you know, because of that situation, you've got you, in the river, you know, the current's going to be super strong. And then when you oh, head yeah. out to the lake, it changes. So depending on where you feel like you're going to go and try to catch these things, you know, you're going to have an interesting three days of zipping around. And the, the weather can be anything from, oh, that's from a below whole freezing yeah. to 75 degrees. Right. That time of the year, it changes so quick. Exactly. With that April time frame, that early April, I should say, <laughs> that's flip, flip a coin. Like you said, it could be 60, 70. You could be in a T-shirt, possibly shorts even, um, or it could be the other way. It could be 20 easily, and you could have two to three inches of snow on the deck of your boat. <laughs> right. So. That, it's going to play a big factor. It really is. I mean, that, that early early April events, weather always plays a huge factor in them. You know, we talked to Joe last time about that, that event coming up, and he explained it a little bit, uh, the format and everything. Uh, for those who are watching or listening here, uh, can you explain kind of the rundown of the way that works compared to other tournaments? Yeah, so this is going to be a unique experience with the Professional Walleye Series. Um, it's 32 anglers. The the big thing with that is we have five qualifiers and a six event championship. The same 32 guys are at every event. So unlike some of the past circuits we've all fished on, you know, there's not a. And it, it was what it was. It's it's fine. It's great to compete against locals and stuff. But I guess the way we there's not a local cherry picker. There's not a guy that only fishes this certain area. Yeah, he's a heck of a stick out there. But he's basically going to pay his money, come in fish that event and he's not going to travel and do it the rest of the circuit right so you take all that out of play it's the same 32 faces at every event uh the second thing is you know we're not having to put any fish in the live wall and i'm all for that like even when i go fun fishing i rarely keep fish to eat and i'm 100 percent for it like i'm not against that it's just if I, unless i'm cooking them that night i do not put fish in the freezer so i love seeing fish go back to swim i just love catching them Right. And when we're able to catch these fish in this PWS format, put them on a scale, release them, this will all be done within a minute, and then continue fishing, that's going to be phenomenal. And not worrying about babysitting fish in the live wall, taking care of them because you don't want you know fish mortality. Right. Um, n- no one does. There's not one angler that wants to kill a fish. There is not. Not professional angler. Um, so, you know, those are some of the keys. And like I hit on before was the three-day practice period. And like current Currently, right now, I can't go out and even look at hardly the Detroit River. I can't put a boat on it. I can't float on it. I can't take a pontoon dinner ride on it, which is awesome. So 30 days before each one of our events, it's it's off limits totally to getting any info, to see in the body of water. Um, and then, we, like I said, we have three days, three days to dissect it. And uh, uh, you go into the first two days, and out of the 32, only eight move on. And that's when you get your head-to-head bracket established just like what's coming up tomorrow with the uh, ncaa bracket you know it's, it's right pretty on. cool stuff what uh, the other kind of big thing i like and what i've been saying this whole time with this format is it's a five-day tournament so monday through friday that's what you hope it to be you will slip up you will have a bad day it is going to be really really tough to have five great days but in this format, it's how bad do you slip up and how bad does your competitor slip up? Mm-hmm. So you can have a bad day and still advance and then still go on to win this event, which is, I think, is it, it's awesome. It, it, I can't wait. I, I seriously, uh, I hope you can see the excitement because I'm excited to get this thing started. Well, I tell you what, it's, it's coming up soon. It'll be Detroit River, uh, April 9th through 16th. Um, the 28-mile stretch of the river unites Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie, serves as a national border for Canada and Michigan, and its deepest hole is going to be 54 feet at the upper mouth of the river. So you are going to have an enjoyable time trying to figure that out in April. I'm not going to lie. That's yeah, this, of, just a little stretch, right? This right, little, little, right. Basically a 30-mile stretch. Right. Exa- <laughs> well, actually, that, that, that's actually a good thing. It, it limits you to where you're going. You just got to figure out where they're at, right? And you just keep zipping up and down. Yeah. Right. Uh, question, do you ever drag harnesses? Drag crawler harnesses? Yes. Yeah, I, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I fish crawler harnesses a lot. Um, 
I will say with the the PWS, we are artificial only. That is another oh, factor. Okay. This, so there you um, go. That's a that's an and, interesting and tidbit. Honest, yeah, and honestly, as a, an angler, I love it because it sounds bad. One of my oh, just kicked my table. One of my uh, <laughs> least favorite things is taking care of bait. Oh, the babysitting of you know making sure crawlers are in the fridge, chubs, whatever. All that's gone. We're we're 100 artificial for the PWS. So um, yes, I use crawlers live bait a lot. Have in the past. Now I won't be worrying about it, which I'm I'm, I'm not angry about. That's awesome. You know, and Elijah says, uh, gives you another compliment. Is he like the president of your fan club or what? Um, <laughs> uh, what I like most about Josh is he's always been a straight shooter, extremely smart. He's not a talker. You're a doer. So you go out and do it. Appreciate it, Elijah. Yeah. No, actually, you know, Elijah's from my hometown. Um, he's, a, he's a heck of a stick around here as well. So don't let him sneak up on you. Um, he's, a, he's a toothy critter chasing guy. And tell you what, if, you know, if on this Lake Wisconsin, Wisconsin River system, if I want to go find a muskie or a pike, I know there's one person that could put me on one, and it'd be Elijah. He's he's a good dude. We we run into each other a lot, and uh, we get to exchange some stories, so which is awesome. Hey, I just want to give you a quick heads up. Joe Okad is sneaking through the chat room here. I think he's trying to get to get the skinny on how you're going to set up for this tournament. <laughs> oh no, is he? Yeah, he said hi. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> he, he, he's probably he's probably yeah. Let's see what he's talking about. Right, right. Oh, that's Joe doesn't stuff. know about what we talked about no, before we came on yet. So No, no he doesn't. And no. I'm going to let you talk yeah. to him about that when you guys get together. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things. And this head-to-head thing, if you make it to the the, the, the brackets and they go live, uh, you'll have a cameraman in your boat. Do they have uh, you, the fisherman, and a cameraman, and that's it? Or is there three people to a boat or just two? Uh, so once you get to that bracket format, everyone will have a cameraman. And everyone will have a marshal as well as the angler. Um, in the first stage where there still be, I think it's 8 to 10 boats that have cameras out of the 32 in the first two days. Um, so they will have three people per boat. So there's a dedicated marshal. The cameraman is strictly a cameraman, not acting as marshal, judge, you know, everything. It's running the camera. Your marshal is the one recording everything, calling all the shots. So, yeah, there will be times where you have three in the boat. Okay. You know, that, that you know. I just wanted to know the format because uh, I've been kind of watching the bass guys and waiting for you guys to get live and do this head-to-head thing. Can't wait to see that uh, yeah. coming up. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting. I, I, I find it interesting when you when you finally get here and you get on, on there, uh, interested where you go. Are you allowed to – you can only stay on the American side? Correct. Okay. Yep. Because that's where they're fishing, the American side. I yeah. Assume. Well, they're, they're well. If you go a hundred feet I, I, over a hundred feet past center, correct. is that what it is? Well, right down the well, typically right down the middle of the river. That's the border. So. But right now, you're not allowed to go. I mean, we're not without a special visa. You're not allowed to even go into Can- Canadian waters, correct? Right, right now, right. there's no. It's yeah. restricted travel to Canada. Yeah. I couldn't so, just pack yeah. up and go to Canada right now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we're 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 straight on the Michigan side. Okay, that's good. Just stay yeah. there unless you want a pretty little uniform. <laughs> I hope I hope that's where we should be. Like I said, I've never been there. So, but but honestly, that's that's a good thing for for me, I guess, because you know, basically, it cuts the river in half. Right. You know, it's a, a half as much to look at. I know I can't go over to the other side, so concentrate over here. Even though there's something tempting, and <laughs> from what I hear, it's pretty decent on that side. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yep. we got to fish this side, so we'll and, make it work. And that's where dependability of your motor is going to come into play because you don't want to go drifting. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. We're bumping up here on the last break, so let's get that out of the way, and uh, we'll come back in the last segment. We'll have a little bit of fun, see where the questions lead we got to talk about this one-armed buck. Yeah, yeah, we, got to, we haven't talked about the hunting side yet because from the pictures you sent us, quite the hunter too. So we'll step outside, take a break. We'll come back, we'll talk a little bit of hunting as well. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com.
<laughs> Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Again. Got a little dicey there, didn't it? If, 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 you gotta <laughs> watch, if you're listening to the podcast, you gotta you got to watch the Facebook Live because what happens between the segments is uh, just priceless sometimes. Good stuff. It, it's only instigation at its finest. <laughs> but we've talked fishing. We've talked about family. But also, you're a hunter. And we kind of like that. Not going to lie. You sent us a picture of a, a, a kind of a... Okay, it's a nice buck. I get it. But, dude, you got your arm in a sling. What's up with that? Yeah, so uh, the year I shot that one, uh, that would have been that would have been last year. Um, I, had, I had shoulder surgery in October. And because of the fishing season, I, I had, it, it was a tough choice. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a diehard, dedicated bow hunter. Um, but with the fishing season, I put off shoulder surgery till October. As soon as we were done, I had it done. Which means my archery season is pretty much squashed mm. in Wisconsin. Um, that one I shot, I believe, I want to say, when was it? First week in November. So I have not, I can't pull back a bow. I'm obviously still in a sling. Um, my twin brother has a crossbow that him and his wife have had um, from when she was pregnant. That way she's, because she's also big into archery. Um, so that way she could keep hunting while she was pregnant. And he had cited the thing in for me, and it was actually after his his son's birthday party, which I think I left there at like 1231 in the afternoon. He he gave me his crossbow, and I went out. And the the goal was to just go sit. Um, sit knowing you may have a chance, but it was I was kind of losing my mind not being out in the woods. Right. And, uh, you know, like I always say, with archery hunting especially, it's it's not all about seeing a big buck and shooting it. It's everything that's going on. There's the the, the woods is so alive in that time of year. Absolutely, that it's just so enjoyable to be out. It's the experience. Um, I needed that. Yeah, exactly. And I needed that. You know, I've been you know that that brace. I had to, I had to keep on for I think it was a month and a half for twenty four seven sleeping in it. Everything. It, it, I I just had to I had to get back to normal. It, that's that's who I am. And uh, so I, I long story short, I went out and that deer i had seen for the last two years kind of watching them grow um one of the very few deer i even named i don't name a lot of deers like a lot of people do but that one i saw all the time and, and did and i knew exactly who it was and i think i sat for an hour and he gave me a 20 yard shot my brother well, 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 again, hold, I could, hold on I could hold start, on I, you you, you well, you're using a crossbow how does one yeah. pull a crossbow back with one arm yeah. So yeah. So my brother came up and he he was with me and he cocked it before he left. No way. Oh man. So nice. So yeah. So hold on. So you have to give half the credit to your brother. You know, there's <laughs> my twin brother is the one that got the bow ready, uh, and then I, I I always say this is the best deer I've ever shot because and my older brother Robert, you know. So after I shot it, you know, I call both my brothers and it's. Just call it 233. So they know. I'm not calling them the the, the the chat. They know I'm out there. So literally both of them are like, you shot? I'm like, yep. <laughs> they're like, unbelievable. <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> one of those type of deals. But uh, yeah, my, my older brother, Robert, and his wife, Katie, um, they came up to give me a hand because obviously I wasn't quite able to, to do a lot of dragging and, and picking up. And But uh, that's why I say it's the best, best buck I shot because my brother gutted it. Uh, I did help with my one hand get it into the back of the truck, but... Yeah, you know, it was uh, pretty hands off. It was awesome, actually. Man, that's, that, that split G two is awesome. I know, right? There's some character in that buck. Yeah, I, I tell you what. So he just shoots the buck. He gets his brothers to a cock the crossbow and b gut the deer and load it up and load it up. Wow, wow that's not a bad deal. That's, that's pretty sign good. Sign up for this program. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I need to get that sling out again this coming year. There you go. There maybe, you go. Maybe, maybe that's it, right? Maybe the deer felt sorry for you. Yeah, it probably did. <laughs> Well, you, you got you sent us a couple other pictures. Uh, you're in an airplane flying somewhere to do a hunt. What what's up with that? Yeah. That looks pretty so, cool. So yeah, to date, that's probably the coolest hunt I've been on. Um, me again, Robert, um, two of our other close friends. We did a do-it-yourself drop camp hunt up in Alaska for caribou. Nice. And that was an experience. Kind of to start off, you you get in th- that that picture of me in the plane. So the weather was terrible, windy and stuff. So our transporter, he actually took three of us in one of his bigger planes. That's a that's his bigger plane. If you can see how much room's in there. Yeah, you you look um, like sardines, all right? 
Yeah, and I'm, I don't consider myself a small person. I mean, I'm about, you know, six foot, 200 pounds, but I, yeah, it's, it's pretty tight. So he flew three out of the four of us. Robert was the one that stayed back. He basically got us a little closer to the hunting grounds because of how bad the weather was. We couldn't take the little plane to get us all the way there. The next morning, he flew Robert all the way there, then came to this halfway point he dropped us off at that we camped out at and flew us all together. Um, We were allowed ourselves, our rifle, and 50 pounds of gear, and that was it. Wow. That included your tent, everything. It, it was an incredible experience. It was awesome. And uh, I, I think I sent you a picture, too. We tagged out. All four of us did. Um, and it's one of them deals. We're all in the middle of nowhere. So we have, you know, it's not like, you, hey, we're done. You want to come pick us up? You you get dropped off this day. We'll see you in a and week. And you get picked up. Yeah. And <laughs> But if the weather's bad, you know, it might be two, three days later because of these little planes. So right. um, that picture is one of my favorites. Uh, I don't know if you guys have it up or not with the four of us yep. holding our, our caribou. You're, you're, uh, you're, allowed, you're allowed one each? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we were done. Then. Yep, yep. But basically, we had a lot of time. Um, you know, there's a lot of meat care that go into that. You know, we, we went to work. We built a meat pool out of the resources there. You know, mm-hmm. we, we had one guy brought a, brought a, a small little um, tomahawk slash axe. Um, there was a lot of manual labor going into that as we're, you know, treating the hides. We're taking care of this and that. The meat, we're hanging it. We're rotating it. Um, but at the same time, we had time, in my opinion, it's a pretty cool picture. Um, yes, we had our phones with us. No, we had no service, but we were able to take pictures. So what happened on that picture was I was setting it up with rocks on the other side of that Creek. Okay. And we'd start the timer and I'd sprint across that Creek (laughs) and everyone else was in position and I'd quick try to grab, grab my rack and make it look decent, you know, (laughs) and quick hold it up and smile. And it was, it was like that. But, uh, again, we had, we had nothing but time pretty much at that time so it was fun and we got some cool pictures um yeah we had a blast we did we did uh that's one i hope comes back around sooner than later that was an experience for sure well wait you said you're limited on on the weight of gear did all four of you sit down and methodically plan okay i'll bring this and then i'll bring this so we you know did you all work that out so you didn't have multiples of the same thing yeah, hundred percent. I mean, when you're fifty-five pounds of gear, it, that's not much at all. That's hardly anything when you consider, you know, you set your rifle aside. Now, right. everything else that includes your food. I right. mean, MREs, whatever. That's the the your your jet boil to cook that type of stuff. Right. So yeah, we definitely did. Um, we basically made a, a list of shared essentials. And then divided it up, okay. and you know, you you're bringing the water bladders, you're bringing this, you're bringing that. Um, that way, we weren't, you know, well, there's no need when you're up there for more than one jet boil. Realistically, unless something happens, but then now you build a fire. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, we divided it out, and uh, it was a it was an awesome trip. We we we, in my opinion, we nailed it. It was fun. We had everything we needed. Um, but then we were successful, which was great to have fresh meat. Obviously, when you're on a hunt like that, there's nothing more rewarding than taking a back strap and <laughs> cooking it that night. So right on. And, and 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 did you have any visitors, as in bears? You know, we did not. We were very prepared by that, and you have to be if you go up into the tundra in Alaska. Um, we had no bear visitors. We had a moose come through in the evening that we could hear as we were, well, we're sleeping. Um, they're not the quietest animal, so <laughs> it came through pretty close. Um, we found out later, once we got back to the Fairbanks area, um, we actually became friends with a, some locals there. Um, and they were saying the area we were in is like a heavy, um, heavily uh, populated wolverine area. Mm. And that's where they actually do a lot of their wolverine studies. So they were telling us, they're like, guarantee you, your guys' carcasses were getting hit by wolverines constantly. So, but we never saw one, which I good. guess for my first trip up there, I'll take. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Like, good. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see one from a distance. Right. But uh, if it's that or in our camp, I'll just go without seeing them. Don't want to shake hands with yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Don't yeah, go slap a high you, five. You, you do your thing. I'll do mine. We're right. all right. right. <laughs> what, did, what did you guys use for water filtration? So we had 
two different filtration systems. We had a gravity fed, um, and then we had collapsible five gallon uh, bags. So we had one that was dirty water where we'd go to the creek, we'd fill that, put it through the filtration, and it was filtering into our clean bag. Um, then we also had the ones, and I forgot the names of them, but basically you fill up a cup and it's, you, you know, just push hard down on it, mm-hmm. that type of deal. Okay. So we had two different systems going. It was kind of how much water we needed. We always kept our clean bag full whenever we were back at camp. You know, if it wasn't full, someone would get more, run it through the filter, keep that full. So we always had plenty of drinking water because, you know, the, the, the fun part's hunting them and getting the kill. But that's when the work starts now. And right. we had a good group up there. And it was literally every bull we shot all them four. We went four for four. Four guys were on that bull. It was all hands on deck, you know, mm-hmm. caping, cleaning. Uh, cutting and then and then you got to haul it all on your back and I, there's i've got some pretty good pictures i probably should have sent since we're talking about this of us you know with the meat strapped down our packs the racks and all that stuff so but uh that's when the you know you do your high five and you take your picture and now it's kind of like okay Time shed a couple after. layers because here we go yeah. now the work starts so well what, what makes it nice is, is is it becomes an event for all four of you in this yeah. case that it, it it's all enjoyable yeah you know you got your whoever did the shooting that day or 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 that morning or that evening okay that they enjoyed that 30 seconds of yeah you shot one now let's enjoy the next five hours together because we're going to be we're going to be hiking we're going to be working yeah yeah exactly and and the thing is it's a lot of work yes it hurts it's tiring but like when you get back to camp with with everything it's a it's a it's a big reward you know (laughs) you kind of finally sit down in your chair and you're like oh and you realize what just happened, and it it makes it all kind of come full circle, and it, it's a cool experience, you know, doing it that way. You know, looking back at doing a DIY like that and having such great success, uh, if you were to go back again and you're looking at it through the lens now, what's the one thing that maybe you encountered that you didn't expect that you would change, or would, or maybe you wouldn't change anything? So I guess the the big thing would be I did take my long gun out there mm-hmm. the first time ever doing it. Now that I've done it, I've got one. I experienced it. Like I said earlier, I'm a pretty big avid archery hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably bring my bow. Okay. For sure the next time. Knowing, you know, again, like I was saying, you know, it's not about the success. But I, I'm not going to lie. You know, we all know that's it's not free to go to Alaska and do this. So my thought process was... I, 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 you know, I want to get a caribou. I want to have a good time. I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be frustrating my first time going. We're now my second time going. I would love to bring my bow. It's not going to be frustrating. I don't feel pressure like I, I've already shot a caribou. I don't feel pressure to shoot a caribou. It would be awesome to do it with archery, though. Mm-hmm. Right. So, how, okay, that so would probably speak- be my big change was I'd bring the bow. So, next speaking time. of that, the distance you shot with your rifles was roughly 200 yards. Do you think you could have closed the gap to within bow range? So, no, not on that one. So the the thing with the caribou is they, at least the time of year we were there, they just don't stop moving. They're, 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 they have their A to B and they're going. Um, we actually, real quick, I'll try to tell the story. We spotted this, this herd coming over. It was like two ridges over and kind of where we've been seeing them. It's like, okay, they should be right here. We saw the, the bull I shot. Um, we did not see that. We saw a nice bull in that herd. So me and uh, my buddy, Kurt, we went up this, like, again, you call them ridges, <laughs> but it's more than a ridge. It, it's quite a hike. It's a range. Um, yeah, it took us, I mean, it took me 30 minutes and I half jogged it and I was about to pass out when I finally got up there um, just because Kurt had his stuff ready to go and he took off and I was scrambling in my tent, packing my bag, trying to get everything ready, you know, to go do this hunt. Um, so I kind of half jogged and I was ready to die when we got up there. And basically we sat and like the first 15 minutes, these caribou should have been on our lap and they weren't. We're like, what happened? You know, sitting there and all of a sudden they looked like up to my right. And it ended up being a different herd. They came right down, right on us. And the bull I shot was in there. And uh, never presented a shot. I actually ended up having to strip my backpack off and everything and start sprinting down. It was like a two-tiered area where we were on. And they came so close that it blocked it, or, uh, uh, blocked a good shot. So I had to sprint to the end. Um, like I said, I shedded everything and ran down and caught them as they just came out and quick laid down prone, found them and put a good shot on and dropped them right there. <laughs> wow. The unexpected happens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. It, it, it's weather. one of them things where you, you, you always have to be ready for anything, you know, it, it, you really do. 
That's like an archery. Yeah. You, you, whether yeah. you practice, yeah, every shot possible behind you, turning, twisting. You, you never know. You never know what's well, going to happen. Well, we're if getting... we got a, a second, I mean, with with that said, my last three shots when I shoot at a target is always with fingers. I shoot a release. It's always with fingers. Well, that one time happened. I forgot my release. Didn't know it till I got up in the stand. I had changed pants from a morning hunt to an afternoon hunt, and I sat there and I shot a nice buck with fingers because I practiced. Because I practice. know where my bow shoots, and it's totally different. It is not right on compared to a release when you shoot fingers. But I did my last three shots every time I shoot is with fingers, so I knew where it shot, and yeah, I was able to kill one with fingers. There you go, guys, gals. Good, good go. advice right there. You know, we're, we're, we're getting close here at the end of the show, um, but I, I want to pop this picture up. Uh, you call it the twin bucks. I want you to explain that. Yeah. That's a cool shot. Yeah, so that's my twin brother. Um, I know exactly what picture you're talking about there. Those deer were shot one day apart, and one was the day before our birthday, and the one, my buck was on our birthday, which also was Thanksgiving, um, November 24th. Um, that was it. It, it was a pretty special year. We've really never doubled up quite like that um, on a year, I guess, so to say. It, it was just kind of, it was one of them fun things where, you know, we, it was a day apart, basically hours apart, and uh, being twins and, you know, basically doing that right on our birthday. It's one of them special moments to be able to take a picture like that, for sure. Yeah, because you don't know if you'll ever get that opportunity again, you know, uh, to yeah, shoot yeah, bucks exactly. like that of a lifetime. So that's cool. I tell you what, you know, just the whole encompass of, of talking with Josh is just from, from his his roots, watching dad fish, grandpa fish, to family, to shooting basically twin bucks with his twin brother days apart. Fishing with birthday. his brother, brother professionally. Fishing, you know. I, I got to ask before we let you go, who's a better fisherman? Me or Robert? Oh, no, in no, the no, family. Just, just the family. In let's, the family. Let's just open yeah. it all up. Oof. Oof. I mean, I'll go bass first since I don't do that. <laughs> Hands down, that's, I mean, my dad fished professionally. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, I'll give, my, my dad's the, the, the bass fisherman for sure. And I'll also give my brother Jeremiah a lot of credit there. Um, I, again, being twins, we're brothers. There's a lot of talking back and forth. <laughs> you think? So I'll tell him otherwise, but I'll give him props right now. Uh, he, he would whoop me bass fishing, and he usually does, too. So And, and you uh, know, that, that's awesome that you give him a shout-out because that just that just shows you what kind of type of person you are. Uh, being the straight shooter you are, you're a doer, obviously. Well, and come April, we're going to find out who the better walleye fisherman is. Yes, we are. <laughs> and we got a few minutes left. We're, we're running long, but we're going to – if I don't ask these questions, I'm going to get, you know what's going to happen to me. Yeah, you're um, get smoked. <laughs> right? Um, we ask a couple of questions of our interviewees. Uh, they're real simple, so hopefully we okay. won't. Okay. All right. So first question is, you're, you're going to be driving over here, or you're going to be driving somewhere to get a boat maybe. You're going to be doing, you're going to be doing some driving. What are you listening to on the radio? Oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, so initially, I'll be listening to Sirius, the fantasy radio, it's called. So fantasy, I'm a big fantasy football guy. I'm a big sports guy. So I do a lot of fantasy football. Um, as long as they're talking fantasy football, on the, the I have Sirius in my truck. I'll be listening to that. If it's actual music, uh, it'll be a mix between probably like 90s, 90s rock, the grunge. That's okay. Okay. Kind of like Nirvana stuff yep. like that. Okay. I'm yep. big into. There you go. Um, or same '90s, early 2000s uh, hip hop or rap. I, I also don't mind that. So. Okay. So you're listening to that music. You're driving in your truck, or you're listening to the which quarterback you're not going to start in fantasy football because Absolutely. he's injured. Um, you reach over. You got a favorite snack? What's your favorite snack you're going to reach over for? Ooh, favorite snack in the truck. So. I'm not much of a snacker, but when I do stop at a gas station, the one thing I tend to buy if I am a little hungry is a Reese's peanut butter cup. There you go. Okay. Going for the chocolate yeah. and peanut butter. Gotta like it. Yep. All right. Um, Mike and Dan are going to come over this weekend. You're going to cook us a meal. What's your favorite go-to meal that you would serve us? Venison, fish, something? Go-to meal? Yeah. Hmm. That you would say you guys are going to love this stuff. I would say it's not even. I would probably I would probably do steaks. I would probably do steaks on the grill. 
man, we are going because Joe's going to cook his steaks. Josh is going to cook his steaks. We're going. I was to Wisconsin. honestly, I was going to say crab legs, only because like if I was treating someone, like I would want to do something like that. But like it's, it's I can't like act like we get them fresh in Wisconsin. We don't, but I, I can get them <laughs> we'll fake it. fresh. You know, they're frozen, but they're they're really good. I do right. enjoy making crab legs on we, the grill as well. So we could we could we okay, can we can do surf and turf. Why not? We'll we, do we, we'll we, do uh, crab legs, some king crabs, and steaks. Some there you go. We could we could pull some. We'll get some crab live crabs from Myers. We'll put them in a cage. We'll pull them. Out of out of the out of Green, Green. Bay, and we'll say, "Look what we yeah. caught." And we'll, 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 yeah. you know, we'll have everybody going berserk. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, last question. We just had a great meal of surf and turf. Um, we're going to sit down by a fire, and you're going to tell us a story that 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 really re- resonates within you uh, about you of something that happened or that comes right to mind. What would it be? Oof. Um there is one. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty deep too. Um, there's a local state park here um, that I was hiking one day, and actually, I guess there, there's not a lot of detail needs to go into it. But there was a, a young girl who was struggling with life and basically went off the edge. Um, and I had happened to hear her down there. She didn't. She was still alive. And yeah, that one. Oh, you were at the right yeah, place so- at the right time. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And nice. was able to call for help and yeah. Proud of you. That, good, good, job. Man. good job. That that's that's an awesome story. That there is times when you need to be in the right spot. Anybody at the right time, they need to do the right thing. And lend a helping hand. And lend a helping hand or make a phone call or even just talk to the person if if, if that comes up. That yeah. is an awesome story. Exactly what it, it's exactly what it was. It was, uh, it was a, a tough situation but you know, I'm thankful I was there because it, I don't know where it all turned out, but I know she was okay after that. I mean, to considering what happened. Right. Um, so, yeah. Good. Great story. That's awesome. All right. That's it for our questions. We're, we've, we've taken enough time of, with you tonight. Uh, one last chance. Uh, get over to YamahaOutboards.com. Check out also Yamaha Power Pay. And if you want to follow Josh along, get on Facebook, Joshua Blosser. Check him out on Facebook. Like him, share him, follow him. He's going to be going head-to-head here in April. We hope to see him live. Well, we hope to see four of you guys in the final two days. Right on. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to wrap up the podcast portion. Hang on with us just for a minute, and uh, we'll continue the live stream for just a second. But uh, for those of you on the podcast, uh, don't forget, go over to his uh, Facebook page, all of his social media. Give him a like, follow, and share. Do the same for us. If you're listening to us over on iTunes, give us a re- uh, review over there that helps us. It helps the people who support us. That'll do it for us this week. And next week, we've got... Next week, we got... Uh, end of the... Oh. Bobby Vargas. The one and only from PSC The Archie. one and only. My buddy Bobby. We're going to be talking about some new bows from PSC. And uh, since we didn't see him at ATA, we're going to sit down with him and enjoy a, a good long conversation with him. Oh, yes. All right. That'll do it for us on the podcast this week, folks. You all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSC Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.